Hello friends, this video is going to be all about sharpening drill bits and I'm going to be showing you the method that works for me really well. I'm not claiming it's the right method or wrong method, I'm just saying this one works for me. And if you follow the exactly same process, you should be able to sharpen your drills fairly easy too. Now, and yes, I will be using that scabby looking uh, grinding wheel that you see in the picture right now for sharpening the drill bits. First of all, before I go any, any further, the webbing of the drill is not the same thickness through the whole thickness of the drill. You can clearly see that when you look at the broken drill. And you will see that on the top of the drill, it's very thin in between the grooves, in, the, in between the flutes, and the, on the middle of the drill, it's much more heavier. Again, you can see it's very thin and much more heavier on the, on the middle of a drill, comparison to the very tip of a drill. In the factory drills, when, when some drills sharpen, you can see little, right in the tip, you can see little undercuts right in the tip, so it allows you to drill with the same drill width from a smaller diameter of a, of a hole. So you need to have a less of a pilot, less, less a diameter of a pilot drill in order to drill that. However, if the drill is old and you've been sharpening quite a few times, then it becomes shorter and the webbings will become much heavier. That's where comes this type of a wheel which you can use. And you can use this wheel to cut those um, undercuts. This particular wheel, this side of the wheel, used for sharpening the tungstens. And as you can see, there is lots of grooves in it. And it's very, very common in a workshop to have one wheel for sharpening tools like uh, drill bits or um, cutting tools, other bits and pieces, and the other wheel just for sharpening tungstens. And uh, that's a kind of a good practice. So here how you can use this wheel, uh, which been, well, most people will consider to be um, damaged, but because you have that edge, you can actually cut into the center, into the webbing, and um, making sure that your cutting edge aligns along the um, face of the wheel, internal face of the wheel, and you can cut little undercuts right in the center to thin down the webbing so you can actually start with a thinner webbing. You can go too, too thin and you can break that webbing every so often if you're not very careful. Um, if you don't want to do this procedure, it's not really uh, that important. All you'll need to do is to start using a bigger number of pilot drills. So all you need to do is make sure that when you're cutting is this edge uh, stays parallel to the face of the stone and uh, this edge is actually, you, you also like, trying to keep it parallel to the edge of a stone or even more inclined because you want to have cutting edge. The cutting edge needs to be the highest point at all times and that's what we're trying to achieve um, regardless what type of uh, sharpening methods you're going to be using. And um, if you do not have much of experience in sharpening drills, it's always better to do this, uh, to undercut your webbing uh, at the beginning before you start sharpening the drills. Once you gain a little bit more experience, you can do it after, but uh, it's really good practice to, to do it uh, before sharpening. So let's speak about drill bit. We're going to be calling the cutting edge, a cutting edge, and the uh, Basically, th this is the cutting edge, and we can clearly see it. Um, and what we are also going to do, we're going to call um, this the heel of a flute. So th this part in here, we're going to call it heel of a flute. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to start our um, position with a keeping hold of a, our drill bit as close as possible to the the end of the drill bit and we're going to use our other hand we're going to start grinding from a heel leaning the drill bit in and now when we start seeing sparks jumping over top of the cutting edge that's when we're going to uh, stop uh, progression and we're going to start moving into yeah this, this sort of motion we're going to start moving from cutting edge lifting up the drill bit back to the heel so we'll start from a heel go up to the cutting edge the moment we start seeing sparks going over top uh, cutting edge we're gonna start lifting up back to the heel so this way we're gonna achieve our cut uh, situation where cutting edge is always in the highest position because we're grinding away from a heel and when we return it back to it we're also grinding away 
back to the heel so in this video i will try in this section of the video i will try to talk less because i want you to hear exactly the sound it will make when you will see we, we will start um, from a hill and then uh, coming over to the edge keep an edge horizontal so it lies in nicely and then um, you will see the sparks start and jump over across the edge and what will happen then is we will return back on the heel and you will hear the sting sound of it you can see i'm just um because my heel is quite sharp what i'm going to do i'm going to use the whole surface of the stone so i don't wear whole like groove in it and then uh, i will start cutting normally once i get off that high point because it's a brand new drill brand new heel and as you can see i just lift it up and you can start to see the heel starts to wear this edge that the angle doesn't need to be very big it just needs to be the cutting edge needs to be just the highest point that's all it is remember it's always better to start nice and light and uh, work very nice and slowly so you can actually just let it all uh, material been eaten away and uh, don't rush with this thing. you can hear this noise when i'm lifting up to see one or two uh, sparks jumping over that edge and I know that I'm I'm right at the top I'm right at the tip because if you start seeing a bunch of uh, sparks jumping over that's mean that you already cut that edge away really heavily yeah once I spotted a couple of sparks I'm just lifting off and when, when I'm lifting up I'm pushing away and grinding into the heel if you do a good job on undercutting webbing and sharpening your drill bit then you may be able to use a drill bit without need for any pilot holes for example like this 13 mil drill bit that i sharpened um, i'm just gonna show you on the piece of aluminium that i'm just gonna twist uh, turn this drill by my hand and you will see that because my webbing been cut um, and everything really sharp i'll be able to to start cutting into aluminium just simply by using the fourth from from my hands if you see the way that I can improve my um, sharpening technique, please write it down in the comment section because the way I see it is every day is a school day and we learn from each other. And that's pretty much the whole point of this video. If you find this video to be beneficial, guys, consider to subscribe or at least uh, like it and uh, make a little comment because this helps to let other people see this content and uh, propagate it through YouTube. You can also use the same technique to sharpen really small drill bits. Um, I never really sharpen anything smaller than uh, 5 mil because uh, then it becomes quite difficult. Um, the smaller the harder. Please consider following. If I need to drill very precise um, hole, I will always use brand new drill. I have a set of drills which I'm only using for machinery work. If I have a hole to drill which I can drill slightly bigger, like 0 0.02 of a mil bigger or around by that size I can use drills that I resharpen the other thing what I need to mention is the pointier the drill the more it will the easier it will center itself and also the more it will bite into the material so if you have material which is uh, like nylon or a plastic occasional drill can bite right into it and jump forward uh, really uh, heavily strongly however the more uh, shallower drill the, the lesser uh, pointed drill it will actually cut um, into that such material a lot easier because it will not going to be jumping into the material all the time from heel to the edge and back to heel and uh, this pretty much with the same technique you can sharp almost um, anything and it worked for me the, in this particular case um, I just uh, got this um, big building cutter from ebay because i needed to cut some um, fiberglass 
and after sharpening it uh, worked really well. Broach cutter, unibore cutters or annual cutters, I don't know what's the right name of this thing, little guys and no matter what you call it, by the way you can write it in the comment uh, what, how do you call these little things but they are brilliant tools for uh, mud drills, for uh, pillar drills, even in lathe if you really need to have a precise hole you can really cut it out uh, brilliant tool, you can use it to sharpen them as well and the same thing goes for it as well that uh, the smaller it is the harder it is to sharpen and you just simply need to pay attention and it's really um, starts to you know it's your, your hearing starts to play more important role in this because quite often you can't really see that great and uh, you just got to time it right and you can get a really good cut out of these things greatly extend the tool life and save you quite a bit of money because they are relatively expensive compared to you know drills special jobber drills for mild steel and so on finally i have a little challenge for you guys uh, i have a situation where i have a flat bar 50 mil wide by 10 mil thick and i need to drill 7 mil holes in it how many holes will i manage to drill with one 7 mil drill bit just write your the answers in the in the comments below and in the next video I'll tell you my answer because that was a job that I'd done, completed and I, I know exact figure how much holes I can get out of a 7mm drill bit when I'm drilling through 10mm thick steel. Um, the other thing what I've got to mention is I'm planning to build a new computer so I can edit this type of videos um, a little easier than what my current machine can do and I wonder if you guys would be interested to see a uh, PC building video from very beginning with explanation on the parts why certain parts been chosen how to choose them and basically everything in regarding building a PC I know it's not much of a welding theme but uh, who knows maybe you'll be interested that is it for me in this video and I hope it was informative for you guys hopefully you learned something new and again hopefully I will learn something new from uh, your replies as well Thank you very much for watching.